So I've been getting a lot of questions from a lot of new players. You know, a lot of people in the comment section are like, hey man, like this banner is super sick, but the end of the year though, like the end of the year, this is packed full of some of the strongest banners that we're going to get in this entirety of this year. Some people have been looking forward to the end of the year just in particular because there are four banners in particular that close out the year that are bringing some pretty powerful meta servants into the game and so i thought you know what i would just do a dedicated video so it's like for the rest of the year you can just point someone at this banner even after like the space ishtar banner goes away you can point them over here and be like look at this video all right this video talks about the four main banners you want to hit at the end of the year and whether or not you should summon on them based on what you've got in your account. So this video is basically going to be an overview of the Space Ishtar banner, the Scotty banner, Super Orion's banner, and then the big boy, the Big Mac Daddy New Year's banner where they throw 50 billion powerful five stars at us. And so I'm um, doing a video on all of those to be like, hey man, do you have these units? Then you should summon on this banner. Do you not have these units? Do you have people to replace this guy? Do you have a decent account? <laughs> then you might be able to skip this banner, okay? That's the whole point of this entire video, right? Because if you have Scotty, obviously you don't need to summon for Scotty, right? So like that, that should already be like very obvious. So we'll go ahead and we'll start off with Space Ishtars. But before we be forget, before we begin, I almost slipped up there and almost forgot to do my YouTuber intro, bro. Like we're almost at 10K. I can't be not doing the YouTuber intro, you know, the good old, you like the video, you subscribe daily FGO content, all that nonsense. Anyway, let's talk about the fun stuff. So the first banner I want to talk about is Space Ishtar. And this might be a little bit of a controversial opinion, but I think you can actually afford to skip out on her this year because she's coming around next year and Space Ishtar won't be necessarily super meta until Castoria comes out. Because right now with Scotty, even though she can become a quick servant, she tends to struggle a little bit with as being a quick farmer because I remember when she came out on JP, we were all super psyched. We were like, oh, we can use her as whatever we want. And because it was the Scotty meta, people were trying to use her with Scotty and it didn't really work out all that well. I mean, there are definitely some team comps where you can pull it off. I'm not saying that you can't do it, but the team comps where it's viable are very limited. I forget the guy's name. There's a guy on Twitter, if I remember, I'll like link it in the comments or something, but he's very good at making like farming setups for the different servants and he makes them in these very nice diagrams. And so you'll see like a lot of really good servants who'll be like, oh, you have Summer Musashi has like 400 billion now with Castoria. And you know, we have Summer Jean with 400 billion different setups. But then when it was Space Ishtar, in the quick meta, there was like two setups. <laughs> like it was not pretty if you wanted to consistently three turn farm things at, with Space Ishtar as a quick servant. So that's why I'm saying, unless I, I get it, there's a lot of people that are huge fans of Reen, right? Like they're gonna be summoning for Space Ishtar regardless if she was good or not, right? I can't stop those people. But if you're somebody that's summoning for Space Ishtar and your main reason for summoning for her is that you've heard that she's very, very meta, well, they're right, but there's a little apostrophe next to that. She's super duper insanely meta once Castoria comes out. That's when Space Ishtar hits her peak, right? You're going to have some people in the comments that might be trying to be contrarian about it, being like, well, actually, you could do, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, you could do stuff like, you know, maybe splash in a Nero Bride, try to use Tamam. You could try to use some art setups now, but it's not going to compare until uh castoria comes out right that's when she's gonna be super meta and thankfully space ishtar's rerun is like right after castoria like it's like a month or two after castoria comes out uh for the six year anniversary or five year anniversary my bad and so if you want to wait and just try to snag castoria and then space ishtar then you can afford to do that but i would only recommend doing that if you're not going to be something on like any of these banners because keep in mind if you decide to hold out for next year you're putting yourself in a position where you need to summon for castoria and then space ishtar back to back right so i would only recommend like skipping on in space ishtar right now if like you need scotty or something which perfect segue let's talk about scotty scotty basically if you don't have her i would 99.99999 percent recommend you summon for scotty over on JP, we still do not have a secondary quick buffer. The best person we have is like 
Rider Ishtar because she gives like a 20% quick buff and then she gives the NP gain buff. Like we have that, we have Atalanta who gives a one turn 50% quick buff to the entire party, whoop de doo And then we have Alexander, he gives a little attack buff and a little quick buff. Not very good secondary quick buffers when you consider that Buster has like Chen Gong and Merlin, Tamamovich, uh, even Shakespeare, who's like super old at this point. Like you have all these like really good side options as well. And then or now you technically have Auburon as well. And then for arts, you have like Nero Bride, you have Tamamo, technically Crane. People use Crane as an arts buffer technically, even though she's more of a general crit server. And then you have Castoria. You, technically, you could maybe say that Van Gogh is like the secondary quick support person. And I would somewhat agree with you there because I think she's really good. But because she's not like dropping a 50% battery on an ally and not giving them a massive quick buff and then giving them like NP gain or like other things to kind of help them out, she doesn't really fit that role. Like the same like farming role that you want your main quick supporter to kind of fill, right? Because that's kind of the whole point is that these like different crazy support type servants are helping you farm the game because it's like 90% of what you do. So like that's why they're so good. So if you want your quick servants to look good, of which there are many quick servants that you would want to look good. In fact, if you look at some of the upcoming banners, you have MHX Alter coming out. She's basically the quick version of Galatea, right? Galatea is like a crazy single target arts berserker. And then you have MHX Alter, who's basically the crazy single target quick berserker you know you bring her with double scotty and she just kills everything like she just annihilates it god forbid they are a saber please save their soul right because they will get obliterated like conceptually they will not exist at all in the game anymore right they're just gone their existence vaporized okay dunzo so if you're gonna be needing to say uh if you're gonna be needing to summon for scotty because you don't have her then you might be able to just like skip out on space Ishtar, summon for her next year when she's gonna be meta anyway. But then again, if you don't think you'll be able to afford to be in a position to summon for Castoria and space Ishtar back to back, then, you know, kind of go with your own judgment, right? This also varies depending on like, if you are a complete free to play player, or if you're like a dolphin player, which means you spend like a little bit of money here and there, or if you're a whale, you don't care you've already summoned on every one of these banners you probably already bought your quartz and are waiting just for space is trying to come out so you can get her np5 right like you probably don't even care so that would be my recommendation i think scotty's probably the most valuable servant to come out of these like next four major banners right because she's still got that insane good value of being the premium quick buffer right now like she's gonna make your quick servants look the best they can possibly look right now and even if jp tomorrow or technically like wednesday slash thursday night or morning that's when we'd get the like new data download and the new information on jp so even if on that day they announced a new godly quick buffer that's still two years away on global and so if you want your quick servants to look good in the meantime you're gonna need scotty so the next banner after that super orion this guy is in a very similar position to arjuna alter because i believe if i'm remembering correctly arjuna alter hasn't gotten another solo raid up and neither has super orion and that's because they're both nutty broken they're both stupid good super orion is a character where he just kills everything with crits right he doesn't care what you are you could be man woman child saber lancer berserker alter ego doesn't really care he's just gonna punch you in the face and you're gonna die and there's really not anything you're gonna be able to do about it he's just gonna kind of wwe wrestlemania his way through everything in the game right he is stupid insane name in the game get his np twice once you've gotten that np twice it's a wrap everything dies there's no stomping him solos pretty much everything in the game if you have like if you have like Qi Shi Huang, right, the Chinese emperor, he's like the ultimate stall servant. Super Orion's like ultimate solo DPS servant, right? He just obliterates everything. So understandably, if you have a very weak box or you're a very new player, Super Orion is very, very tempting because then you can kind of just beat everything up in the game. You can just clap everything. Like it doesn't even matter you don't even need to support him you don't need a merlin don't need anything like he gets too much crit damage on his own gets too many buffs just crit smacks everything in the game doesn't even matter right annihilates them 
So very appealing to go for Super Orion, especially because he doesn't have another raid up coming. So again, this kind of ties back into if you're someone that already has Scotty, so you don't need to summon on this, very lucky. And then if you're gonna consider skipping out on Space Ishtar for next year, so you can summon for Super Orion and dedicate more resources towards him, very valid option. And these technically are like the three remaining banners for 2021 because you know this is new year's this is going to be 20 uh 2022 but i do feel like it is worth mentioning because there are going to be very powerful servants on this banner i mean first and foremost you have yang who i don't know if any of you na players have been keeping up with uh the jp version of the game but we had a little thing called lost belt 6 come out and there was uh just this one like fluff ball thing that kind of appeared out of nowhere and was just like the hardest boss in the game casually and there was like three servants that did well on that fight one is yang the other is enkidu and then i forget what the third one is but like very limited servants can like do that pretty comfortably and yang is one of them i believe that speaks to how good yang is yang is very very good shiki saber not the best you know, then you have, like, Skahog, pretty good, like, damage tank. But then you have, like, Chi Shi Huang, who I was talking about. Um, Super Orion over there, and now he's, like, the ultimate DPS staller in the game. Or, like, just the ultimate DPS soloer. Chi Shi Huang is basically ultimate just staller in the game. He will basically never die until his opponent is dead. Like, you just win. You just send him in by himself, and you win. You can't kill him. He's too good, right? He's too insanely broken. Um... BB Summer allows for very disgusting team comps. How disgusting are we talking? Well, the end of Lost Belt 4 gives a lot of people trouble. You know, the fight with the tree and Aspatamon, you know, that tends to be a really hard fight for a lot of people. But did you know that if you had a BB, a Parvati, and then you just bring a friend Scotty, you turn it into a farming node? You literally three turn it because BB's third skill is that broken. Guaranteeing that you're gonna have the same cards every single turn is nutty you can turn so many bosses and farming nodes that are supposed to be really hard super easy when you can guarantee that you're gonna have the exact face cards you need every single time so very nutty on that aspect and then kiara even if you already have her i mean there's gonna be a lot of people including myself that are gonna be trying to summon to get np2 kiara because kiara's kit is very good you just need to get that np2 so she starts doing decent damage and then once you have that, you're off to the races, right? Then Kiara just becomes a staple in like any fight that she has super effective damage in, right? Any cavalry class fight, she's gonna clap. Like she's just super crazy, very well built for a lot of that. So the end, <laughs> I guess the end answer here, right? Is like, what do you need in your box? It's like, can you afford, like if you're not like a huge Rin simp, right? And like, you're like, you don't need every Rin face in the game right now. Can you wait to summon for Space Ishtar next year? Yes, technically you can. Do you have Scotty? Yes or no? Uh, if you do not have Scotty, I, again, highly, highly recommend that you summon for Scotty. She will make your life very easy. And then, you know, she'll also bring out the best of your quick servant. And again, there's a lot of very good quick servants in the game that you want to have their full potential. And so if you have Scotty, don't summon for her. If you do have Scotty, or if, if you don't have Scotty, summon for her. If you do have Scotty, don't summon for her. Then Super Orion, you know, is only right up in the game for at least the next two years. If you want a guy that punches things and just kills everything in the game just casually with big crit damage? Yes, summon. No, then don't summon, right? Like, pretty simple. Um, I would say that Super Orion gets more value the worse your box is, though. I will say that. I'll add that note that the worse your box is, the better. It's the same thing with Chi Shi Huang as well, because solo servants are very, very good for accounts that are not very strong. Like you don't have a lot of like the main general supports. And so you really can't cheese or just like blitz through a lot of these challenge quests or these hard bosses. So you're relying on a lot of these servants that are very good on their own and they don't need support kind of get through them so again if you're like a more new player or you missed out on merlin and maybe you tried to summon for scotty and you didn't get her that might actually influence whether or not you summon for super orion or not because if you don't get scotty and then you're like oh man my box is going to be significantly worse now then you know super orion is more tantalizing he's more appealing and then finally you have this end of the year banner and uh yeah odds are there is a servant on here that you either want or you 
feel like you need so just do keep that in mind if you're a person that doesn't want anybody on here or you already have the servants on here that you want dude just you're gonna have a very strong start to 2020 uh 2022 so let me know what you guys think in the comments down below um let me know what you guys are looking at on these different banners i know there's gonna be some people that are gonna be like i'm summoning for saber astolfo honestly saber astolfo very cute servant you know i like him i think as a, like a, a gameplay character i didn't want to say like just character and be like oh his character is like well i think his character is awesome but as a gameplay or from a gameplay standpoint he's not the best but he's not bad like I don't really know how to word it, right? It feels like he's a little lackluster, right? Maybe that's the best way to say it because he's definitely not bad, but he's disappointing in a way, right? Because it's like, oh, five-star Asolfo, and then, you know, he's a little bit of a letdown. But let me know what you guys are going to be summoning for for the rest of 2021. Don't mention anything down here. When we get to New Year's, I'll start talking about how just bonkers 2022 is going to be for the English version of the game. Well, we'll talk about that at the end of the year, but... Yeah, just let me know in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have yourselves a nice day.